It all began with a quiet dinner. My name is Emily. I'm 32, happily married to Daniel for almost five years. We've built a comfortable life together in the city, surrounded by friends, a cozy apartment, and a steady rhythm of work. Life was calm and predictable, or so I thought. That evening, everything started to shift. It was subtle at first, just a question, but it opened a door to something I hadn't seen coming. Have you ever thought about moving back to your hometown? Daniel asked out of nowhere, his eyes flickering up from his plate. He sounded casual, but there was an edge to his voice that I couldn't place. I paused mid-bite, glancing at him. My hometown? Why would we? I responded, raising an eyebrow. I hadn't thought about that small, sleepy place in years. We were both settled here, in the city, with our jobs and routines. The idea seemed so out of the blue. He smiled, but it didn't reach his eyes. Just thinking ahead, he said, shrugging. You know, maybe in the future. I nodded, letting the conversation drop. But something about his tone stuck with me. Daniel was a planner, but he never talked about the future like this, especially not moving to a place that neither of us had much attachment to. We finished dinner in silence, though I couldn't help but feel that the room had gotten just a little colder. That night, as I lay in bed next to Daniel, my mind kept returning to his strange question. Why bring it up now? We had no reason to leave the city, no big changes happening in our lives. I tried to brush it off, telling myself it was just a random thought. But sleep didn't come easily. The next day, things felt normal again, but I noticed small shifts. Daniel was glued to his phone more than usual, constantly texting someone, but he never mentioned who. Every time I asked, he just waved it off, saying it was work. I tried to believe him, but doubt had already crept in. A week later, we were having dinner with his parents, a routine visit that I usually looked forward to. They were warm people, always happy to see us, but this time the mood felt different from the moment we stepped inside their house. His mother greeted me with her usual hug, but something in her eyes made me uneasy. It was as if she knew something that I didn't. She glanced at Daniel with a strange expression, a look I couldn't quite decipher. Throughout dinner, there was an underlying tension. Daniel's father, usually talkative and jovial, was unusually quiet. His mother kept throwing odd glances our way, especially when Daniel mentioned something about a house. My ears perked up when he said it. We're thinking about looking at a place outside the city, Daniel said casually, as if this was something we'd discussed. My fork froze midair. I hadn't agreed to any of this. What house? I asked, trying to keep my tone even. Daniel smiled at me, but it felt forced. I was going to tell you. I found this property back in your hometown. It's a great deal, Emily. I thought we could look into it. I stared at him, my heart pounding. You didn't mention this before? His mother cut in, smiling too brightly. Oh, it would be perfect for you two. That town is so peaceful just what you need after all the chaos of the city. I barely heard her. My mind was spinning. Why would Daniel make a decision like this without consulting me? And why were his parents acting so strangely supportive of something that didn't make sense? The rest of dinner passed in a blur, my appetite gone. I felt trapped in some silent conversation they were all having without me. That night, back at home, I confronted Daniel. What's going on, Daniel? Why didn't you tell me about this house? Why are you suddenly so interested in moving back to my hometown? He sighed, sitting down on the edge of the bed. I was going to tell you, Em. I just wanted to make sure it was worth it before bringing it up. Worth it, I repeated, confused. What does that even mean? We haven't talked about moving. We're fine here. He rubbed his temples. I know, I know. But things change. Just think about it, okay? 
The city isn't where we need to be forever. I shook my head, frustration boiling inside me. You're not making any sense. Daniel stood up, pacing. It's hard to explain. There's just more opportunity there than you think. Opportunity? I asked, baffled. For what? He didn't answer. Instead, he walked out of the room, leaving me standing there, more confused than ever. Over the next few days, Daniel became more withdrawn. The more I tried to get answers, the more he pulled away. I felt like I was losing him, and I didn't know why. The tension between us grew, and soon, even the smallest conversations became strained. Then, one evening, everything changed. Daniel came home late from work, his face pale, his eyes darting around as if he was nervous. He had barely stepped through the door when his phone rang. He looked at the screen, glanced at me, swing, and then hurried into the other room to take the call. I followed quietly, pressing my ear against the door. I couldn't hear everything, but I caught enough. I told you, I'm working on it. Just give me more time, Daniel whispered urgently. Yes, I know. No, she doesn't know yet. She can't know. My blood ran cold. What didn't I know? My heart pounded in my chest as I backed away from the door, trying to make sense of what I had just heard. What was Daniel hiding from me? And who was he talking to? Later that night, I confronted him. Who was on the phone, Daniel? What are you hiding from me? He looked startled, but quickly composed himself. It's nothing, Emily. Just work. I shook my head, anger bubbling to the surface. Don't lie to me. I heard you. You said I couldn't know. What's going on? For the first time in days, Daniel looked genuinely scared. He took a step back, his hands trembling slightly. Emily, I... I'm sorry. I didn't mean for it to get this far. Get what far? What are you talking about? I demanded, my voice shaking. He took a deep breath, running a hand through his hair. It's about the house, Em. There's something about it. Something that we need to figure out. I blinked, completely confused. The house? What does that have to do with anything? Daniel sat down, his shoulders slumped in defeat. It's not just any house, Emily. It belonged to my family. A long time ago. And there are things... Things we need to deal with. I stared at him, feeling like I had been plunged into some kind of surreal nightmare. What things? Why didn't you tell me this before? Because I didn't want to scare you, he admitted, his voice barely above a whisper. But now, I don't have a choice. Scare me? About what? I asked, my stomach nodding with dread. He looked up at me his eyes dark with something I couldn't quite read. There are secrets in that house, Emily. Secrets that go back generations. And now they're catching up to us. A shiver ran down my spine. What kind of secrets? Daniel hesitated, as if he was deciding how much to tell me. Finally, he spoke. My family. They were involved in something. Something dangerous. And that house? It's tied to everything. We have to go back, Emily. We have to fix what they did. The room seemed to spin around me. Dangerous? What did they do, Daniel? He shook his head. It's too complicated to explain right now. But I promise once we're there, you'll understand. I didn't know what to say. My mind was racing, trying to piece together the fragments of information he had given me. None of it made sense. How could a house be tied to something dangerous? And why did we have to go back to fix it? But before I could ask more questions, Daniel stood up and grabbed my hand. We need to leave. Tonight. What? Why? I asked, pulling away from him. Because we're running out of time, he said, his voice urgent. Please, Emily, trust me. Everything inside me screamed not to go. 
but something about the look in his eyes, the fear, the desperation, made me pause. Against my better judgment, I nodded. We packed quickly, throwing only the essentials into a couple of bags. I couldn't shake the feeling of unease, the nagging voice in the back of my mind telling me to stop, to ask more questions, to demand answers. But I didn't. I let Daniel lead me out the door, into the cold night. As we drove, the city lights faded into the distance, and the dark, winding roads of the countryside stretched before us. I glanced at Daniel, who was gripping the steering wheel tightly, his jaw clenched. He hadn't spoken since we left, and the silence between us felt suffocating. What aren't you telling me? I finally asked, unable to bear it any longer. Daniel didn't look at me. There are people, Emily. People who don't want us to know the truth about the house. They've been watching us. My breath caught in my throat. Watching us? Who? I don't know, he said quietly. But they've been following me for weeks. I thought I could handle it on my own, but... It's bigger than I thought. Fear crept into my chest. What do they want? They want to keep us from uncovering what happened, he said grimly. And they'll do whatever it takes to stop us. The weight of his words hung in the air. I looked out the window, trying to make sense of everything. But nothing made sense. This was supposed to be my hometown, the place I grew up in, where everything was safe and familiar. How could it be tied to something so dark and dangerous? As we pulled up to the house, a large, old Victorian that loomed in the distance, I felt a chill run through me. The house looked just as I remembered, but something about it felt... wrong. The windows were dark, and the air around it seemed thick like the house itself was holding its breath. Daniel parked the car and turned to me. We don't have much time. Once we're inside, we need to find what we're looking for and leave. What are we looking for? I asked, as my voice barely above a whisper. He didn't answer, just opened the door and stepped out into the night. I followed him, my heart pounding in my chest. The house loomed above us its shadow stretching across the ground like a warning. As we stepped inside, the door creaked open with a low groan. The air inside was stale, like the house had been abandoned for years. Dust covered every surface, and the floorboards creaked under our weight. I couldn't shake the feeling that we weren't alone. Where are we going? I whispered. Daniel led me through the dark hallways, his steps quick and purposeful. The basement. That's where it all started. I swallowed hard, fear gnawing at me as we descended the narrow staircase into the basement. The air grew colder the further we went, and I could feel the weight of the house pressing down on us. When we reached the bottom, Daniel turned on a small flashlight and shone it around the room. It was empty, except for an old wooden chest in the corner. He crossed the room quickly and knelt beside it his hands trembling as he opened the lid. Inside the chest were old papers, photographs, and strange symbols drawn on yellowed parchment. Daniel rifled through them, his breathing quick and shallow. This is it, he whispered, pulling out a piece of paper and handing it to me. I stared at it, trying to make sense of the symbols and words scrawled across the page. What is this? It's a map he said, his voice shaking. A map to the truth, to what my family did. Before I could ask more, a loud creak echoed through the house above us. My heart leapt into my throat. Daniel's eyes widened. They're here, he whispered, 